Welcome to the Solar Decathlon Building Science Education Series. I'm Paul Tursellini, and in this episode, I'll be demonstrating how to calculate R values for a simple wall construction. Going back to the heat transfer equation, we see that to calculate the heat transfer going through the building envelope, we need the U factor or its reciprocal, the R value. We will devote this episode to finding that R value. As we look at the R value of insulation, we need to figure out how to calculate the total R value of a wall. The thermal resistance of various different materials are tabulated in many textbooks or professional journals or on websites, especially manufacturers' websites. The easiest one to find is often the R value of the insulation product itself because they are often written on the packaging or on the product. But all materials have some insulation value and we need to find the R for these items as well. So let's think about how a wall is built. We'll use this house as our example. It's a concrete house with foam board insulation and a stucco finish on the exterior. To calculate the total R value of the wall, we'll zoom in on a specific section to see how these different materials come together. Looking from the top down, we can see that this wall consists of four inches of concrete, two inches of foam board insulation, and about a half an inch of stucco on the exterior. What we don't see is that there is a tiny layer of air on the outside and on the inside of the wall that is caused by stagnant air and the convection coefficient. So if you think about the outside being cold and the inside being warm, and I have a little bit of air that's sitting right against the wall, it's actually going to get warmed by the wall a little bit because heat is flowing from inside to outside. And as that rises, it creates this film of stagnant air and just beyond that, a little bit of moving air. This thin layer is also called a surface film of air. Another factor that plays a part with this is wind. And when wind hits that wall, it moves the air away from it and reduces the amount of resistance we have. So experimentally, it has been determined that the thermal resistance value on the outside for most normal applications is 0.17 square feet degrees Fahrenheit hour per BTU. This is called the exterior surface film coefficient. As a shortcut, we can call it the exterior film coefficient. Likewise, on the inside of the wall, we have the same thing, except in this case, that inside layer will get colder than the indoor temperature and air tends to fall down. And again, it creates this kind of layer along the surface of the wall. And because we don't have the wind impact on the interior, that resistance is a little bit higher. It's 0.68 and has the same units as the exterior film coefficient. We'll call this the interior surface film coefficient or interior film coefficient for short. So when we really look at the wall from the outside to the inside, we have the exterior film coefficient, the half inch of stucco, the two inches of foam board, the four inches of concrete, and then we have the interior film coefficient. And we need to have R values for each of these layers. So we said that the R value for the exterior film coefficient was 0.17 and the interior was 0.68. Remember, this accounts for a small amount of stagnant air on the inside and outside of the wall, and that stagnant air is an insulator. Now, for stucco, the R value varies based on the exact materials used, the way it's manufactured and how thick it gets applied to the wall. For this example, we'll assume the R value for our stucco is 0.2 per inch, so 0.1. With foam board insulation, we can look that up pretty easily. On the back of a piece of foam board, you'll see that it is usually around R10, or sometimes you'll see that it's written as something like R5 per inch. 
And so in order to find the total R value, we would take the R5 and multiply it by the two inch thickness of the board. And we see that for the R value, the foam is 10. For the concrete, you'll notice if you look up in the table, there are lots of different forms and densities of concrete. For a four inch poured concrete wall, the reference where I looked it up said that the R value is 0.13 per inch. So 0.52 for our four inch wall. And then as we move through layers of our wall, we can add these individual R values to get the total R value for the wall, which is 11.47. Now, there's a couple of interesting observations here. One of them is that the resistance of the concrete is very, very small. And even though it's pretty thick, that concrete is highly conductive. The second observation is that the film coefficients together have a higher resistance than the concrete. So the foam insulation is dominating the insulation value of this wall. We can use this technique of adding up the R values for any wall that is made up of these consistent layers. In this case, the foam is continuous across the entire wall, the concrete and stucco are continuous and homogeneous, and we have an inside skin coefficient and an outside skin coefficient. The strategy perhaps to increase the insulation of this wall would be to add two more inches of foam. So now I have R20 for the foam, and I could repeat our calculation. So in this episode, we introduced the concept of effective thermal resistance of the air surface on the edge of the wall called a film coefficient. We gave values for the interior air film coefficient and the exterior air film coefficient based on a vertical wall. Another application of this concept is with horizontal surfaces, such as a flat roof. The interior air coefficient is actually a little bit less because the air layer is a little thinner than it is for the wall, and because the air is then falling from the ceiling down towards the floor as it cools. The interior air film coefficient is 0.61 for horizontal surface, such as the ceiling, and for the exterior it's 0.17. However, unconditioned attics become fairly complicated because they often are impacted by solar gain and the amount of outside ventilation that we have moving through that attic space. That complexity means that the simple one-dimensional solutions are difficult to do. Our target here is to help you understand some of the physics and how it applies to building design. We're going to see that for well-insulated buildings, the ceiling and roof have a minimal amount of heat transfer compared to the walls. For the time being, we will consider ceilings and attics with the one-dimensional model. And remember that these are all models to approximate real-world physics of heat transfer. And so that concludes our introduction to calculating our values for a wall, but stay tuned for more episodes on this topic. We'll look at stud frame wall construction as another example, and we'll also take a closer look at the calculations by demonstrating a spreadsheet approach to determining the R values. Let us know if you have any questions, and as always, thanks for watching.